Hello everybody. So I figured I'd do a video on the electric bike build I just finished. So I got a golden motor edge hub motor for the rear of the bike. So it's a direct drive 500 watt motor and I have it on an iron horse compadre that I got at Sears for $179. It was on sale and it's a mid fat 27.5 inch uh, rims and it went surprisingly well. Um, got a 48 volt battery, 14 and a half amp hours and uh, pretty impressed with the whole deal. So here's the bike, pretty much all done. <clears throat> so this is all based on the Golden Motor Edge hub motor. So this is a direct drive wheel hub, basically, that the motor fits in. So the tricky thing about this whole build was I wanted a bike that was a mid-fat, a 27.5 mid-fat. So the tires are 2.8 inches wide and I wanted that mainly for suspension to improve the ride of the bike because the bike's heavier than normal. I was going to be going longer distances and I wanted it to feel more like a motorcycle than a bicycle in the way it went over bumps and handling. So I bought the bike, which was really the cheapest part of this whole build really, which is a uh, got it at Sears. It was on sale for $179. It was uh, it's an Iron Horse Comanche or Compadre. And it's the same as a Mongoose Terax, which is also the same as a Mongoose Hondo. They may be made in different factories, but they're pretty much the same bike. So I've had other cheap bikes, like at Walmart or whatever, and this one isn't bad. I mean, it, you're going to have to know how to do your own little maintenance, and when you get the bike, you're going to have to repack the bearings. And, I mean, since you're going to be replacing the rear entirely out, I went ahead and repacked the front bearings with some good grease, because they just... It's just a cheap bike. They don't use good grease on it. And uh, I happen to have a 180 millimeter disc brake rotor lying around and the adapter to push the caliper out further. So I stuck that on there, which just gives you more surface area for braking. But the, the key thing here is that I knew this would be a good platform for what I wanted because I'm, not, I'm just going on flat roads and easy riding. I'm not going to be going down a mountain because these bikes wouldn't hold up going down a mountain anyways. They're just not expensive enough. You need much better components. But for cruising around, I wanted a higher speed bike. That's why I went with a direct drive motor. So I just had a rolling start up here at a trail that's dead flat and I'm going into the wind here and I'm just leaving the throttle at full throttle. And it doesn't take too long to get up to full speed. I'm a little bit surprised how much torque this motor has, given it's a, I think it's a 500 watt motor. But against the wind, I'm getting 26 miles an hour, and this is just motor only. I'm only the thumb throttle. And uh, I've already like backed off here. I'm coming up on another person here on the trail. But uh, it was uh, heading into the wind, and I'm sitting straight upright, not pedaling at all on the bike. So I decided to go downwind, so there was a little bit of wind there, but now I'm going downwind, same thing, I'm just flooring it. I've got a thumb throttle, so you can see my right hand is pushing the throttle down there. And uh, going with the wind, I'm getting 29 miles per hour, so you can see the... I got my phone set up on GPS speed here, so uh, it's not an app, it's not connected to the bike at all. It's just using GPS uh, signal to f estimate how fast you're going. So that's pretty reliable. Um, going both directions, 26 miles an hour into the wind. Uh, with the wind I'm getting 29, so you can get about 27, 28 miles an hour. And uh, the bike pulls surprisingly hard, um, even from a dead stop. The thing I didn't really realize when I bought this bike is that you can't get a hub sent from gold motor spoked into a rim for this type of bike so you're gonna have to order the motor you might as well not even order it with the rim because you're gonna have to spoke it into the rim yourself so in my case I had to buy the spokes and learn how to spoke a wheel in which is pretty easy you can just look at YouTube and figure out how to do it but uh, the thing is in the aftermarket they don't really sell any 36 spoke hole rims that are 27.5 i mean they might but they're very expensive because it's just not common the newer rims like the new 27.5 rim designs are all based around a 32 hole rim so you really can't find the rims in 36 hole except for this bike this is like the only bike i've seen that's a 27.5 bike that has a 36 hole rim on it it's just single wall simple rim it's nothing special about the rim 
but at least it has 36 holes so I can spoke this motor in there with no problem at all. So this bike turns out to be a pretty good candidate for if you're looking for a cheaper 27.5 electric bike to set up as a platform. This is pretty good. I really do like this bike. Iron Horse, I mean, components are obviously right there near the bottom, but you're going to replace a lot of them. Like all this stuff on the back is going to go. You can just fool around with uh, some of the other components. The suspension's actually pretty good on there too. It really does seem to work. But in building this bike though, the first thing you're going to have to do is get you can swap your freewheel on here, which will work. This particular bike has about 140, maybe a little more, millimeter dropout. And the problem I had is I couldn't find a freewheel that stuck out far enough this way to line the, the chain up with the fatter wheel. So the solution for that is I bought a free freewheel that is eight speeds and the funny thing is I'm only using the bottom seven speeds this way so the extra extra gear the width of it all pushes everything out that way further which is what I need I looked into spacers and the spacers would have been so big that I wouldn't have had any threads left on the freewheel to mount the thing anymore but this works perfectly because I, every every set of teeth is five millimeters out I need about five more millimeters that way so I'll never get to the first gear and the irony there is first gear on this particular gear set is higher of a gear than it used to be on the original bike. The original bike first gear matched the one that's second gear on this freewheel so amazingly it worked out perfectly and the, and the high drive works out perfect too. So it's uh, mechanical disc brakes on here so they're pretty easy to swap out with some Avid brakes, like Avid BB7s if you want, to improve the braking system. But uh, uh, not really much of a problem. I mean, the, the biggest time, amount of time you're going to spend is mounting the back and getting the spacers exactly right. And on this one, because the wire comes out of the back here, I found it was easier to have a zip tie, kind of holding the wire away from the spinning part of the wheel, which would have probably worn into the, the back... Uh, uh, worn through the wire because the disc brake had to be shimmed up a little bit to fit in there. But that's really all it is. Once you get the spacing and the, sh the shims for everything like your disc brake caliper and everything else sorted out for how your hub's really going to fit in there and getting your chain alignment right, it's the rest is very easy. I mean, uh, the only other thing I had a little bit of trouble with was the battery mount. And I knew I was going to run into this issue. To mount it, you the thing has two holes about like about these positions, and the 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 original mounts on most bikes are pretty low. They're around here because they expect you to be putting a bottle holder here. And this thing, you really want more than anything mounting it down here. Uh, they have this metal plate up here where you can go into. So what I had to do is get a riv nut gun drill into the frame of the bike and install rib nuts. You can buy that thing at Harbor Freight for like 23 bucks and it comes with rib nuts and that works amazingly well. It was very easy to drill the frame out and stick the rib nut gun in there and, and pop these rivet things that are threaded into here so I can screw in a mount for the battery. So I got two rib nut things I screwed in here. Uh, I've seen a lot of people recommend that even though this is a, an aluminum plate down here you can see that that's aluminum. People recommend drilling straight through the aluminum backing because there's nothing there. You can't hurt anything drilling through this. And that gives you another very solid mount. And you're really going to want this. The bike's going to be bouncing around a lot. You're going to want metal to metal mounts. I've got three. One all the way through a piece of metal here. And then two up here to hold this on. This thing is not going anywhere. So that works out really good. But the other thing that's really nice about the golden motor is that the controller's inside the hub, and this is one of the reasons I got this. And I don't have to have a controller box with a snake of wires going all over the place. With the controller being in the hub, it's just a much cleaner install. So I have the hub back here, and this the other thing I like about the edge motor is it's not gigantic, and it's a little bit lighter than the Magic Pi. So it looks like it belongs there. It doesn't weigh a huge amount, and this thing has more power than I thought it would. I'm really surprised and uh, I've been running around quite a bit and it's been working out really well. But uh, 
the getting the the motor having the motor having the controller means there's nothing minimal wiring and the other beautiful thing about the gold motor is the wire they have coming out of the wires coming out of the motor have multiple pins on them so this is the leftover wire for the for the uh, display that I'm probably never going to use I'm going to probably tape this up but the other wire all the all the wires are together until they get to this breakout point much further up in the bike where it can break out to the controls and the throttle and that type of thing and that works so nice to keep all these wires clean in there because the cheap bike kits the a million wires come out of the motor and it looks terrible the controllers all over the place with more wires it's a big mess it's really worth to me having a cleaner setup of much less wires it just works out so much better but the other thing i really didn't expect to be super excited about and use a lot was the cruise control that this thing has so it just looks at the throttle position that you're at so if i put it at half throttle i'm cruising I hit this button, you don't have to have your finger on the throttle. So the thumb throttle is not hard to hold down, but it just gets tedious after a while. And if you have the twist throttle, it's kind of the same thing. I mean, it's you, if you're cruising, like which is what I bought the bike for, I cruise pretty good distances. As soon as I get up to speed, I just hit the button. And I typically cruise at like 15 miles an hour, which is easy for this bike to do. I mean, with a top speed of 29 miles an hour, 15 miles an hour is not that much so you're not you're going to be going in at a really efficient rate and hit the cruise control your the battery seems to last forever i mean i would really recommend getting a 13 amp hour but it depends on what you're going to be doing maybe a small battery is better because it's a little lighter but this bike is kind of heavy i didn't buy the cheapest the you know most expensive lightweight bike in the world but that's because i want to i want it to feel like a motorcycle i mean it handles this thing the bike i'm a little surprised it handles really good this suspension for the price that it's at is works out really well and I, I i like the look of the bigger tires but the key thing is you get a nice amount of suspension just in the rubber of the tire the the tire hitting bumps is going to give you some suspension and this is a rigid rigid rear so there's no shocks in the back which i actually like so the back can still soak up a lot of bumps with the bigger tire and I think when you're going with a cheap bike, it's better to have the suspension in the tire than it is to be paying for a suspension unit that's cheap. This bike does have a front suspension, and I'm surprised how good it works. It's probably going to die. I mean, I can replace it at some point, but it does take up a bunch of bumps pretty well, even though it's a fairly cheap suspension. But the nice thing is that coupled with the suspension you get out of the tires, you get a really smooth, nice ride out of it. I think early on when you're putting this bike together, you're going to be putting everything on and taking it off so many times. It makes more sense to just use Velcro and it holds everything up fine. I mean, you can move it around. It's soft on the bike. It's not going to scratch it up. And the other thing with zip ties, if you've ever used zip ties a lot on stuff, when you zip stuff on and then cut it off, this is like a little knife waiting to cut you open. So, especially down here where you put your foot to kick the kickstand down, you can cut yourself super easy on this. So these, I still have the old style zip tie on there, but you'll probably just cut yourself on it. So, you, you know, it's so tight, such a tight area, it's probably best to use zip ties here. But on all these other places, I have the Velcro works out great. You can move stuff around and you don't have to cut them off every time you want to rearrange something. And you end up with a mess of wires. But uh, for the gear shifter, you're kind of limited to your choices on what's going to work because almost nothing expects you to have a whole collection of things up here. I've, I've had the thumb throttle originally. I've gone to the, I mean, I had the twist throttle originally, and I found out that electric bikes are not like motorcycles. On a motorcycle, you're maybe not that often at full throttle, but on an electric bike, you are. And... To have the same amount of rotation when you're turning your wrist on an electric bike you're always at full throttle and your wrist is just way down there it's just unusual so for a bike like this you probably want to they need to make a shorter throw for the throttle but even then the throttle the twist throttle and the thumb throttle are both really touchy and jumpy and it's a little odd amount of uh response that they give you on there but 
had the twist throttle, found out the thumb throttle was easier to deal with, especially because you're just pegging it most of the time, you're just hammering it. But the, as far as gear shifters go, this is like a Shimano TX something or other. And I've seen this on a lot of electric bikes, and I was wondering why everyone's using this layout. It's the only thing that'll fit. I mean, if you have this big throttle thing, and then like a rapid fire shifter, it doesn't fit. It's, it's so far over, you have to fish your fingers between this thing to shift. It was just ridiculous. So looking at how everyone else did it, this, this very cheap shifter seems to work pretty good. I uh, don't have any issues with it at all, but you know the gold motor has uh, the brake cutouts, uh, motor cutouts. So when you hit the brake, it cuts the motor out regardless of what the motor's doing, and um, you end up with a bunch of wires up here. It's not a big deal; just Velcro them up, and they'll you know kind of be out of the way. Inevitably, you're probably going to have a light. This is a light a mount for my light, your phone holder, which you can use in place of a. a the dashboard that comes with gold motor because I've looked into that. The kit doesn't come with the dashboard at all. Uh, you don't really need it because you can just use an app on your phone to get speed and trip data probably better on GPS. So this bike, you know, I've, I was kind of surprised how much power it has. It's faster than I thought it would be. It's actually faster than I really want to go most of the time on a bike. Uh, unless I'm on the side of the road, I'm not really going to even want to crank it that fast but I'm also surprised how much low-end power it's got like at a dead stop you hit the throttle the thing goes and it's not even the biggest motor they make it golden golden motor they have it a magic pie which is twice the size I think in, in, in wattage I think this is 500 watts but more than enough power for what I'm doing I'm going mainly my purpose is to cover a great distance on flat roads that are straight so it's a pretty easy deal for a an electric bike and it's perfectly silent. I can get plenty of speed up. It has plenty of low-end power because I'm not climbing hills really. So I've just pulled the battery off there. Uh, I got this battery. It's a 48 volt setup and uh, I got it on Alibaba or AliExpress. Uh, it's, they claim it's 14 and a half amp hours and it cost me 390 bucks. That's why I got it from them. So I haven't opened it up and taken a look and, and checked the batteries that are in there, but I have done some big rides and it's really, I almost don't get off the green indicator after 20 miles of, of pure biking. I don't like pedaling on this thing. I get plenty of exercise in my life. I don't, I don't want to mix having to pedal to get somewhere because I'm trying to use this in place of a motorcycle. I'm trying to get places with it. So I don't want to go 20 miles and then hop off my bike and then be exhausted or sweaty. I want to get somewhere. So this solves that problem and the battery lasts an amazingly long time. It has tons of power. I'm really happy. So in summary, the bike's better than I thought it would be. I mean, I looked around at all the kits out there and I think the Golden Motor really does have the cleanest wiring set up. It's nice that the controller's inside the hub. That makes a big difference. It, it, the thing works amazingly well. It's super quiet. It has more power than I thought it would. I mean, I was a little concerned getting the 500-watt version instead of the big Magic Pi. Totally happy with this. Uh, I'm not climbing hills. I'm not doing super aggressive stuff. If you're doing running a lot on the flats, it should be a great option. And uh, so the cost of the whole thing, it's 390 for the battery, 450 for the golden motor about I paid 179 for the bike and then maybe just like 100 150 for some miscellaneous things to piece it all together and it's around 1200 bucks you'll end up with the end of the day really nice option so hopefully that gives you some ideas for your own builds or gives you some more ideas about how the golden motor edge motor works but uh, hopefully you can use some of that information take care